Well, seriously, after Saxon and Aerosmith, you guys are just pure evil, mate. Pure <laughs> evil! For the metal thing, it was absolutely, and I don't have to say this. Of course. <laughs> Iron Maiden Killers. Of course. Steve Harris is a big influence. Geddy Lee's a big influence, still to this day. And Geezer Butler, really. Mm -hmm. All three of those guys, um, instrumental. Instrumental in make, making me want to uh, just pick up an instrument. Well, the bass specifically, but man, I tried guitar first. Oh, really? You know, I tried okay. guitar. But I was playing, and I was jamming with Charlie Benanti from Anthrax. We, we grew up together. So we're related. And, um, and he's the guy that pretty much, him and my friend Mike, to, they just told me, you're playing the bass parts on guitar. <laughs> so I heard bass, oh, you know wow. what I mean? So mm -hmm. it just made sense to switch it over. And once I switched to the bass, it was automatic. It was like a click in, something clicked and it worked out. Um, I just, I had the ear for that. It just, I picked up the bass parts really easily. So then it was just, it was onward, man. It was, I just learned like every Rush song I could, every Iron Maiden, Sabbath, you know. And then it just carried on, just trying to get everything right. That, that was my training. That was really growing up in training. So those were also the first songs you learned. When, yeah. when, so when you picked up, when you said, "Man, I'm 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 leaning towards the bass," you pick up the bass. Yeah. What's the song you can't wait to learn how to play? Oh, this. Right. And I, we still we open to that. Song. <laughs> you know I mean? That's the yeah. opening song before Anthrax comes yeah. out. It's still one of those things that made a big deal in my life. I couldn't. I said, "That's lead bass." Yeah. That's uh, this guy, uh, Steve Harris, who's now a friend. I'm proud to say that and honored. Mm -hmm. um, it, the guy just took, I took, he took bass and put it in the front and uh, made it musical. You know, it, it just, and so did Geezer and so did Getty. And, and those were my guys. Those were, and go, growing up without a father, those were my heroes. Sure. You know, so I looked up to those guys. I mean, uh, they were something that they were on the stage, they're playing the instrument that they want to play. Iron Maiden's drummers, Clyde Burr and Nico McBrain, also were drummers that had classic, classic drum intros. Of course, some of the famous Clyde Burr ones. And then of course you have The Prisoner. Some really cool stuff on uh, the earlier albums. So Clive was this drummer that had these really cool drum parts, but then they got the new guy in 1983, and you drop the needle on peace of mind, and this is the first thing you hear. Also vibrato, you know, I, I didn't realize how big of a signature um, vibrato was uh, for guitar players. And I learned how to do it by slowing down records. I mean, I remember listening to an Iron Maiden record and hearing this really slow... But when you played at normal speed... And so I made the... Uh, you know, realization that vibrato was just a series of bends up, up and down, and that was a big moment for me, and it made all of my soloing become, become uh, more believable, and it also helped me develop my own sound as a guitar player. When I was learning guitar, uh, my friends and I, including John Myung, the bass player in Dream Theater, uh, we uh, really loved Iron Maiden and Rush, so we like knew every Iron Maiden and Rush song. Um, when uh, Number of the Beast was a big one, I mean, we literally learned all those songs. So that was one of the risks we loved playing together, was from uh, Number of the Beast. Iron Maiden, too. <laughs> it's been like I don't typically play in standard tuning. I usually play in open C, so it's funny when I go back to standard tuning how much I realize that my skill set for standard ended when I was 15. And one very 
defining thing as a musician, as a bass player for me, was um, uh, the gig Live After Death from Iron Maiden. Every day after school, uh, I got home and I played this gig every day just to learn to do the Steve Harris galloping. <laughs> And to get some stamina to my right hand. Yeah, because originally I played with a pick. Because my brother is a guitar player. He played with a pick. But this was really something that made me think, like, yeah, I really want to be able to do that. And, uh, yeah, so I practice a lot with Iron Maiden and stuff. So the classic Trooper, for example. <laughs> was also interesting about him he was using power chords well, let's take the trooper again like especially on live you can see he does it this kind of stuff and i was like whoa that way you like, give kind of boost especially if you on, on live situation when the like in Iron Maiden, both guitar players are doing melodies because they always have this harmony thing going on. So this bass comes in and makes it more oof, <laughs> bigger. And uh, yeah, I kind of adapted that style myself. I put some chords every now and then, especially in live situations. In the studio, it's always different. It's more calculated kind of. And uh, just his uh, Steve Harris's aggressive style of, it, of attacking the instrument rather than just you know that that was you know it's a cool lick but it's not it's no you know that that kind of thing so that's what really uh, appealed to me uh, the bass that you can really attack it and play it as a as a, a drum and a, and not like a Van Halen type of guitar you could really pound on it even though I think I think Steve Harris uses um flat wound strings if i if i'm correct which which is kind of weird because they're kind of duller sounding um not like you know, straight like that which which i kind of like that but um yeah steve harris is just his you know full full kind of chords just a you know as opposed to like the end of songs or something like that rather than just the tempos of of even even to this day for some reason the number of the beast is 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 weird to me you know I don't know if I'm just musically inept, but I just always, the way I always hear it is just not like him. I don't even know if that's right or not, but to me it still sounds wrong. Other bands that influenced me, uh, everyone was play this, but uh, I learned an Iron Maiden song. Same thing with the Iron Maiden bass player does the gallop like that. Yeah. Pretty cool. I remember working at a grocery store, Wise Markets, for anyone up in the uh, northeastern area of the United States. And there is this dude who is the night manager named Dwayne. And Dwayne was a fucking character, dude. But he introduced me to Iron Maiden. And God bless, I'm so happy he introduced me to Iron Maiden. Of all the Iron Maiden songs, you know, you have your run to the hills and you have your number of the beasts, which are just like your, oh, you know, the first time you hear them. But the one that sticks with me the most, hands down, the trooper. That intro riff is just so fucking sick. <laughs> It's almost like you're in the fucking horse's mind and the horse is just like, let me gallop. Let me fucking gallop. There's so much tension and rising action happening in that very simple, small lick. I uh, loved Iron Maiden, uh, so like the Trooper. <laughs> Love those guys, Flight of Icarus. Uh, big Iron Maiden fan. Uh, 
big influence on me. Uh, I can't exactly remember what my first riff was, but um, I know for a fact that I learned a lot from playing along to Iron Maiden records, uh, Seven Son of a Seven Son in particular, and um, I played a lot of uh, the opening track Moonchild, and um, that kind of learned me a bit of. You know, bits and pieces of songwriting as well, like reusing themes and, um, you know, giving it all, have, have some co cohesion, I guess. So it starts off with uh, the intro chords, really. <laughs> then when the chorus hits in there's a melody line in the guitar that kind of plays that exact, exact uh, riff on top or the melody line <laughs> it's a very good song stuff like early iron maiden how much swing and how much groove those riffs have, mm -hmm. right? Like um, 22 Acacia Avenue, which starts with that legendary, just like, legendary, just like. They just mute on that. And, uh, you know, if you're feeling down, depressed and lonely, right? But the, for me, the money in that song is this, it's just this bad boy riff that comes in around the middle. To that like right but just those what a cool guitar team i guess 14 i was at my friend's place and walked by his older brother's room mm. and i heard something that i had never heard before and immediately i was like oh fuck i need to learn how to play this and that was the lead for Afraid to Shoot Strangers mm -hmm. with Iron Maiden, which goes like... And so on. Since I was playing a lot of Iron Maiden in the beginning, I did a lot of like tremolo practice, you know. So that's one of the first techniques I got pretty good at. I realized, oh, I, I, I need to practice using my right hand as well. But eventually, as you keep playing, you keep developing. Like I said before, I was playing a lot of Iron Maiden when I started learning to play and like obviously stuff like the trooper changed the first time I heard Iron Maiden. Yeah, same. That was kind of when it changed, I think, yeah, yeah. for both of oh, us. Dude, I, came, I came home from school one day, and uh, I don't know if you remember much more music. Oh, yeah. It was on TV, and they were playing Iron Maiden's Rock and Rio. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that was the first time I'd seen Iron Maiden, heard Iron Maiden, yeah. and it completely changed And it everything. was, like, new at the time, like, that had come back, and that was, yeah. like, their reunion thing. Yeah. 
but it was that uh, that was a life changing concert. You know, like, like and we used to play those songs like in one of our first bands. Like, 